I've been a Christian now almost 40 years. In, uh, May, May 2nd will be 40 years. And I know you're thinking to yourself, wow, I didn't even think you were 40. You must get saved when you were, you get, you're in your mother's womb. That's true. Um, <laughs> But I got saved in 1979, and you guys know the story. Steve led me to Jesus, and um, people often ask me kind of, um, how do you do what you do? Because I, I, I have a tendency to kind of trust Jesus and be, be excited and love the Lord and have fun and uh, just kind of a guilt-free life. And that's kind of, ever since I got saved, I kind of lived a guilt-free life. But what does that mean, a guilt-free life? I think, I, I think what, for me, my main scripture was Romans 8, 1, therefore there is now no condemnation for those in Christ Jesus and called according to his purpose. I feel like, that, I feel like that's kind of my song, that's my life, that's my banner scripture. I don't know if you have a banner scripture, but that's the one I always kind of come back to. I, I base my life on that. Therefore, there is now no condemnation for those in Christ Jesus. Condemnation. Everybody say Condemnation. How many times do you feel like you've been condemned in your mind? You ever feel that? Condemnation, you're such a this, you're such a that, you're such a loser, you're such an idiot. And I just never have struggled with that. Because I believed when I got saved, I got saved. That the old man was gone and the new has come. My sin was forgiven and forgotten as far as the east is from the west. Well, the east and west never touch. So I never really um, struggled with when I screw up. It's kind of like I screw up, I apologize, and that's it. I mean, I'm talking about I had some things before I got saved. Uh, eh, this should have been some condemnation, if you know what I mean. There should have been condemnation before I got saved because I needed a little condemnation to get saved because I wasn't, I wasn't all that in a bag of chips, for sure. And, uh, but once I got saved, and, and it was May 2nd, 1979, at 2 o'clock in the morning, I opened my eyes and the world was a different place. And I knew my sins were, were forgiven. And I knew that I was washed clean. And I knew that I was born again. And I think so many of us struggle from just incredible condemnation and shame. And it's like, why? Guilt-free life, that's what you can have. Sure, you screwed up. Join the club, look around. We're, we're, in the, we're in the company of a lot of people who have made some bad decisions. But, therefore, there is now no condemnation for those in Christ Jesus and called according to his, his name and who live according to the spirit, not according to the flesh. If you're shooting at Jesus and you know you're saved, you should be having a really good life. You should be enjoying life. You should be having fun with life. Every day for me is an adventure. You know, I have had one amazing life. Like, I have had an amazing, fun life. Every day at the Father's house is an, is an adventure. Would you agree? You never know what you're going to get at the Father's house. It's so amazing. It's so fun. That's life. Because life never repeats itself from day to day. And the older you get, the more you realize how, what an incredible value it is to be born again. To know that you know that you know that Jesus is real and takes away your sins as far as the east is from the west. Jesus has no memory of your sins. Satan does. Jesus doesn't. Show the picture of Mark, will you? This is kind of like a great illustration of how we should live. There we go. There it is. The father pointing our, our, our ship, our boat, our car. He's telling us where to go. And that's... The scripture I want to go on to is seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. Every day, it's just, it just like, get up, get in the boat, drive it. He'll tell you where to go. He ordains your, your path if you let him. Yeah, rain will fall on the righteous and the, un, and the unrighteous, just the way it is. You could take the uh, picture down. What a life I've lived. What a life we get to live. No condemnation? No condemnation. Therefore, there is now no condemnation. You used to have condemnation, but right now, there is no condemnation. You decide to leave and go, and go do what you want to do and live according to the flesh, you're going to be condemned. You're, but you, sitting in this church, 
focusing on Jesus, seeking first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and going for him, further up, farther in, reaching for the prize, all the things that we say, it's so amazing. Oh, there'll be, there'll be bumps, and you might hit a rock or something. You might, hit, you might have a blowout. You could, have, you could have hurricanes or loss. I like what Stephanie said tonight. I thought she was going to preach my message. Usually happens. Before you get up there, they start meet preaching. You're like, oh, for the love of God. Johnny preached my message last week. I'm like, well, I shouldn't have traded with him. He tra- I traded my time with him. I'm like, are you serious? Now i got to think of something else. And I was so, I had it so good. Well, he did good too. He did really good. Seek ye first the kingdom of God. Seek Jesus first. And all these things shall be added unto you. You want to know how to live? You want to know how to have an amazing life? Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And all these things shall be added unto you. God is good no matter what. Watching, watching um, my grandson being born, what, what a miracle. What a great God we serve. He knows the hairs on your head. He knows the, nut, the lack of hair on your head, too. He knows the birds. He knows when they fall to the ground. He makes a baby out of a seed, a sea, a sperm, and an egg. We're all grown ups. Minica's gone. That's amazing. How can you not say there's a God? And if there's a God, why don't we seek Him? Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. What an amazing life I've lived. I'll tell you, 40 years, it's just been, gosh, it's been great. He's the answer to every one of my questions. He gives me hope. He gives me joy. He gives me freedom. He gives me revelation. He gives me wisdom. He gives me love. He gives me people to love. I mean, it's so amazing to serve Jesus with you guys. And a lot of you are 20s, 30s, 40s. Some of you 50s, some 60s. And I guess what I really would like you to say, to say tonight is just have fun. Enjoy life. Somebody once told me you could have fun in a cave. And I'm like, yeah, I could have fun in a cave alone. <laughs> because you know why? I like myself. Not in a way like, oh, I love myself. I love, you know, I'm not, it says do not be a lover of yourself and, you know, be selfish. But you need to kind of like yourself. You need to kind of enjoy life. If you, look at, if you look every day, it's like a new beginning. Every day it's a new beginning for us, isn't it? Especially if you're seeking first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. Wow, what a life. You just live through it. And, God, and you recognize God is good. He's always good. And every day there's a chance for a new beginning. You guys who've come through drug addiction, it's just, it's just not who you are. I was a drug addict, but once I got saved, I realized I'm not a drug addict. I'm a Jesus freak. I love Jesus. He's everything to me. It's like we all have pasts. I think we'd be shocked if we went around the room and said some of our darkest secrets from before when we were condemned. I know you'd be shocked at mine. He comes to set us free. If you could just grasp that, therefore, there is no condemnation. There's no shame. If you're living according to the Spirit, that's the caveat. If you love Jesus and the Spirit's inside of you, then there's no condemnation. But if you just go out and do whatever you want to do and Jesus has got my back, well, then there's condemnation and you're, you're, you're a fool. And you're living foolishly because that's not true. The truth is not in you. But if you're sitting in the seats and you ask Jesus to be the Lord of your life and you continue to shoot at, the, shoot at the prize, shoot at the bullseye, and try to love Jesus and you just, you trip because you made a decision or that made you upset, you got upset, you got angry, but you did it unintentionally, therefore there is now no condemnation. I'm sorry, Jesus. I'm sorry. I, I just inadvertently swore. I just had a nail and a hammer and I hit my thumb and a word came out, I'm sorry. Anybody know what I'm talking about? Yeah. 
oh my gosh, my kids are driving me crazy. I want to just throw them out of the car and then back up and go forward. Okay, I'm sorry, Lord. I'm sorry, Lord. They're irritating. Oh my gosh, how could this little person, you know, you start with a little eight pound baby and they're so sweet. They're never going to be ups- They're never going to make you sin. They're so, so oh, it's that two year old, but mine's never going to be like that. Right? I think Lisa's going through it with Benton right now. It's like, what happened? And it just causes you, they cause you to have this incredible anger. Any parents say amen? amen. Yeah. And sometimes you sin because you're just a little tired or you're a little freaked out. Or, and you think, oh, my gosh, I'm such a horrible this and I'm horrible that. No, you're not. Therefore, there is now no condemnation. Go back, apologize to those kids for flipping out. Let's get on with life. Right? We have a bridle in our mouth, right? We're horses, aren't Doesn't anybody say? A perfect man. We should probably try not to sin. But when we do, we have an advocate in heaven. We have Jesus. Therefore, there is now no condemnation for those in Christ Jesus and called according to his purpose. So many of you are so walk around with like these signs over you of condemnation. If you are born again, you need to tear those signs down. We're all equal. When, it says, when, the first shall be last and last shall be first. You guys know that scripture? And I often wonder about that. So should I slow down so I can be last because I want to be first? And it's, no, we all, we all end the race together, arm in arm. It doesn't matter if you're the pastor, the pope, the president, the premier. They're all P's. That's weird, kind of weird. It's pretty good. Any P, P word. You still are going to see, finish the race exactly the same as everyone else. Everyone gets the same reward, salvation. It's fun to live. It's fun to live a guilt-free life. It's fun to have fun in a cave with yourself, enjoying yourself. I often say to ladies, as they get healthier, I'm like, you know, the first time I invite them to a, um, a retreat, and they're like, oh, I've never been away from my kids. I'm like, are you kidding me? What's the matter with you? That might be not good for people. But, and then they're, I don't want to go. I'm just, I don't know. I'm a, so they're you know, all the way to the, the retreat. On the way home, they're like, can we, call, can we stay a little longer? It's like, yeah, that's great. So you start liking yourself. You start enjoying yourself. You start enjoying, like I love to go to movies by myself. How many people like to go to movies by themselves? I eat all the popcorn myself. No one shares it with me. No offense, honey. I, I, you know why they made refillable popcorns? It's because of Steve and I. He would eat all the popcorn before I even ate a quarter of it, so it would cause all kinds of duress. So they made refillable popcorns for us. So we had a happy marriage, right? Because we were. Anyway, liking yourself, loving yourself, seeking first the kingdom of God, and all these things shall be added unto you. Seeking you first, the kingdom of God, and all these things shall be added unto you. Either he's, it's true or he's a liar, you guys. If you st- continue to be condemned, you're acting like he's a liar and the truth is not in him. If you're, if you're always condemned, that you're not acting in, f- in just freedom. He came to set the captives free. No longer a slave, but now we're sons and daughters living in the fullness of who Jesus is. Loving life every day. Lord, what do you got for me today? I'm so excited for today. I'm, I'm excited every day I get up. It's not like, oh, geez. No, it's Eeyore. If you, ha- if you know Jesus, there should be a change in you. There should be some joy. There should be some excitement. Because we're not condemned anymore. We're convicted, and that's different. When you screw up, the, the Holy Spirit is right there to convict you. But the sound's different. Conviction is, hey, you know, probably shouldn't have said that to so-and-so. Oh, yeah, you're right. Go back and apologize. Condemna- da- condemnation is like, you loser. You think you're saved. You just had that thought. Well, let me just tell you, we have thoughts all the time, guys. I, have, I, I remember my, my um, nephew one time. He had a nervous breakdown because he had a thought of taking his car and running it off a cliff. I said, do you realize that everybody has those kind of thoughts, right? Has anybody not had those kind of thoughts where you, you, you think about doing something really crazy like jumping off a cliff? Do you guys know what I'm talking about? Yeah. So you don't act upon them because that would be stupid. But the, it flies across your radar 
and you just release it. You don't think you're a horrible person because you had a thought. It becomes horrible when you sit there and think about it over and over again. Then it becomes not good. Therefore, there is now no condemnation for those in Christ Jesus. Who are you listening to? Who are you listening to? You listen to Jesus or you listen to the devil? Who's your Lord? Jesus or the devil? Who wants to be your Lord? Jesus or the devil? Both. Satan would love for you to be live in condemnation. He would love for you to think bad thoughts about yourself all the time. And I'm telling you, it's been one amazing life living with, therefore there is now no, now no condemnation as my banner, as my foundation. I love it. I love it. I give myself a break. We need to give ourselves a break sometimes. We're so hard on ourselves. And then in turn, we're hard on other people, especially people who suffer from, not suffer, who are perfection-oriented, which is a good thing because he said, be perfect like I'm perfect, but it can, it can tip over to condemnation so quickly. Anybody amen? Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. Every day getting up, getting in that boat and letting Jesus be your Lord and just take you where you want to go. He wants you to go. All things work together for good for those who love Christ Jesus and are called according to his purpose. Even when there's a mess, if you're, if you're seeking first the kingdom of God, you make a mess, he can turn it around because he's your Lord. It's fun being a Christian, isn't it? Are you, are you glad you're saved? Yeah, some of you need to really know you're glad you're saved. I don't care if you're in life recovery ministry. I don't care if you're in jail. I don't care wherever you are. You can have a great time seeking first the kingdom of God and his righteousness because he, whom the Son has set free is free indeed. Doesn't matter. He's not a respecter of people or persons. Doesn't matter if you come from the streets or you come from the White House. It doesn't matter. You can turn, change your world around. I am shocked. Yeah, I got to say I'm shocked at um, what this, this group of people, these, this group of people who come from all kinds of poverty and, uh, or, or um, just all kinds of life, life places you guys have all come from, different countries, different areas, different afflictions. Some of us are throwaways. People threw us away. And what the Lord can do with us he uses the, the um, what's it called? The humble to, to confound the wise. The foolish, thank that's the word. He uses the foolish to confound the wise. I, I got to tell you that I am not well-read. I am not, I did not come from privilege. I did not come from anything. I just came, I, all I did was love Jesus. And here I am loving you guys, being with you, being surrounded by greatness because all I did was seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. From the moment I believed, at 2 o'clock in the morning, on May 2nd, 1979, that's what I did. I just went after him. I just loved Jesus. He's the answer to all of our, our problems. And then I practiced, therefore, there is now no condemnation for those in Christ Jesus. And tonight I would submit to you, where do you have condemnation? Where are you holding yourself in prison? Where do you not give yourself a break? It's a fun life. The joy of the Lord is our strength. And I would ask you tonight to, to, to go before the Lord and ask him, where, where's the shame at? You know, when you show, I, sh I showed the picture of the baby, right? He's so cute. He's, you know, he needs, everything needs to be done for him. He, he just is going to take love in, you know, and he's going to be whatever his mom and dad kind of put into him, right? We need to get back to the identity of who we were when we were kids. What were your dreams? Remember? Would you want to be a fireman? Do you want to be a police officer? you want to be president? you want to be a nurse, a doctor? And the joy we had is ours to get back. The inheritance of what we once had that we gave away through people, places, and things. Not to say that we're going to be a doctor, a lawyer, or whatever. It just means that... Satan has come to kill, rob, and destroy all your dreams, and who, and your, but more importantly, your identity. And tonight I'd like to get back our identity and live in a place of joy. How many people just want to live in joy? Yeah. Come Holy Spirit. Yeah. I do too. 
I just want, I want the world to see that the church is joyous. I want the world to say, I want what you have. Oh, I like what you have. What is it? Well, I'm seeking first the kingdom of God. I have no condemnation because I'm, I'm seeking first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto me. So can we have a little bit of music? That's what I have for you tonight. I just really, it's, a, it's a real basic, but it's something that's so important to me that you guys would get that you're so special and you're just too hard on yourselves. And you, can, you condemn yourselves a lot and you hit yourself a lot and you call yourself all kinds of names. It's time to start liking yourself. Whatever's good, whatever's noble, whatever's pure, think of those things about yourself. The woman's Bible study the other day, I asked the ladies, what's your best feature? They, they had a hard time saying it. What's your best, best characteristic? Mine it took me a long time because I'm surrounded by such greatness and I'd compared myself for so many years. And the Lord said, you know what your greatness is? And I said, no, I don't know what my greatness is. My, your greatness is, is that you can love. Your greatness is that you can be hospitable. Your greatness is that you can be a mom to many. Now, I can't do all the creative stuff. I can't do all the, the organizing stuff. I can't do the business stuff. I can't, I can't sew or, or bake, or, but I can love. What can you do? What's the greatness in you? Not comparing, but seeking first the kingdom of God. Loving yourself, liking yourself. God didn't make a mistake when he made you. There's, you're not a mistake. You're wonderfully and fearfully made. And you can have peace that passes understanding in the midst of a storm. You can have joy and unspeakable joy. You can have an amazing life. You can bring many people to Jesus. That's what we're here for, to make Jesus famous. And that's so important. That's the number one thing in our lives is, is making Jesus famous by seeking first the kingdom of God. He's the answer to every one of our problems. He's my anchor. He's my foundation. He's my first love. I can't wait to see him. Every day I'm thinking I'm one day closer to seeing him. One day, he, we're going to find out for sure. This is not an exercise in futility. We're going to find out who he is. And he's going to say, well done, good and faithful daughter. Vicki, come on in. I'm excited. And he's going to say that to you too. If you seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. If he's your Lord, if he's your Savior, he'll say that to you too. Give yourself a break tonight. Love yourself tonight. Like yourself tonight. It can be an amazing life. So Holy Spirit, we just invite your presence right now. Jesus, I ask that you would show my friends where they have condemned themselves where they have not sought you, they've listened to Satan. Where condemnation has come in and gripped them. Where they've been so hard and judgmental on themselves. Father, that you would remind them who they were as little kids. The joy. The excitement and that you would restore to them the innocence, the joy. You'd return to them the joy of their salvation the day they first believed. Jesus, Holy Spirit, let it come, Lord. Teach us the difference between conviction and condemnation, Lord. Oh, Jesus, we want to make you famous. your presence come. Why don't you say, Jesus, 
I want to live a guilt-free life because I live by your spirit. I give you permission to show me every time I condemn myself, call myself names, can say horrible things to myself. I repent for the condemnation I've had in my heart towards myself, the self-hate I've, expo- I've, I've experienced. You don't make junk. You are my Lord. I give you permission tonight to bring back all my joy from my childhood. I want to be who you want me to be.